Hey, this is Brock Lemires. We're continuing our study of embedded systems design by looking at program flow instructions within the MSP430. In this video, we're going to look at two instructions that take conditional jumps based upon the carry flag. So recall, a conditional jump will alter the program counter with a offset, which will put the program counter pointing to a new location in program memory. But a conditional jump only does this when a situation or a condition exists. The condition is always tracked by a flag or a combination of flags within the, the status register. So that's the only way that you can conditionally jump. So that it kind of bounds the way that we think about these. The first set of conditional jumps we want to look at are carry based jumps. And this is going to represent when it takes the jump if jump if carry is c is equal to one, okay? So we're gonna have this jc, and that's that's the instruction. It will alter the, the program counter if c is equal to one. And then you have the exact dual of that, which is jump if no carry, which is j and c. So if c is equal to zero, then it won't jump, <clears throat> or it will jump. Now, here's the key on this. What does it mean to jump, and what does it mean not to jump? Jump means it will alter the program counter to a new location that is created by the address label provided in the operand. So the program counter is not gonna do a normal, just sequence, it's not gonna increment and go to the next opcode. And it will do that if the condition exists. But when it does not jump, okay, for example, if you do jump of carry and you have this instruction in here, JC, and let's say that the carry flag was not set, what does it do? Well, the program counter simply marches on to the next instruction that resides immediately after it in memory. So you kind of have two program flows going on here. The program counter is going to, after it executes this instruction, it is gonna have a different value in it no matter what. The key is whether if the condition is true, the program counter is going to jump to a new location in memory other than right after it, and if the condition is False, it will simply march on. Okay, so that's the big concept of these um, these conditional jumps. Okay, let's do a, let's do an example of these two instructions. And I want to I want to program that has both conditions. I want to have something where if it's set, I'm basically I want to test both of these in a program. But I also want to show what happens when the jump is taken and when it is not taken. Okay, so we want to watch that program counter march. All right. So let's fire up Code Composer. So I got my MSP430 plugged in. I got CCS up and running. And I am going to check my MCU. And again, let's call this ASM flow for uh, data manipulation. Not, no, data program flow instructions. And we'll do carry jumps. Good enough. Okay. Uh, assembly only project. And go ahead and fire that up. And let's type this in, this example in and we'll talk through what we're actually doing as we do it, okay? Okay, we are going to go down here, and we're gonna have a, let's do a label in it. And what we will do here is let's move a byte of data uh, into R4, okay? And <clears throat> what we'll do is we'll use R4 as a flag. So it's like, not a, not really a flag, it's kind of like a, R4 is gonna, we're, R4 is going to contain a value that will vary based upon whether the jump was taken or jump was not. Okay, so let's see here. So let's do this. Uh, we'll come down here now and let's do a main program. <clears throat> and here's what we're going to do. We're going to do move B byte wise and let's go pound 254. Let's put that into R5, and then this will be our test instructions. And then we'll do add.b pound one with R5. Okay, so this is going to be our little arithmetic. 254 plus one, the answer is going to be 255. But more importantly, more importantly, the C will be equal to zero for this condition. Okay, and we can mess with these values and get the carry to flag to go or not go. So then what I want to do is I'm going to put some jumps right here, but I'm going to come down here and I'm going to have a little bit of code that is 
executed when the carry is set. And if it is, let's inst let's put something different into R4. So we'll put, let's do pound one into R4, okay? And then down here, we'll have a carry clear label. And down here, we'll do a move uh, dot B pound two into R4. Okay, and so we're gonna we're gonna jump depending on whatever the carry flag is to these things. Now here's where it's kind of interesting. Uh, actually, it's not not interesting. Notice that if I did jump to here, what would happen is that I would alter R4, and then I would immediately go into this instruction and immediately alter it again. So the way that I handle this is in order to only execute one of these two little situations down here, I'm gonna go ahead and put jump always back to main after both instruction uh, both instructions and what that's going to do is it's going to allow me to guarantee that if i do carry set it's going to come down to here and it's going to say put one in r4 and then hop on back to main and do this thing again and then for this one same thing that'll prevent if i get to this point in the program it will prevent me from going down and executing these and then down here since I have this instruction, I have to have a jump main to get back to the main loop. And so this, these are gonna be the two pieces of code that I will selectively execute based upon the result of this arithmetic operation. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Let's do this. If I get a carry, I wanna jump. So I'm gonna jump if carry to carry set. And let's think about what's going on right here. The move instruction does not alter the status flags. But when I do the add instruction, it does alter them. And I know that by going back and I look at this table of the instructions and I come over to here, JC, and I look at the VNZC uh, modifications and I see that the status bit, uh, oh, that's not right, that's not right. I would go look at the add instruction. <laughs> and so I know that it's, I know that it uh, does alter it. I was looking at the jump, the per, jump instructions right there. So you, I, if you remember, the add instruction absolutely modifies the carry. And so I'm gonna hop, I'm gonna jump if the carrier is set. Now the question becomes, okay, so I do a move, I do an add, and then I do jump if carry is set, and I have a way to jump back to main. The question becomes, what happens if it is not set? Well, the way that these conditional jumps work is if it is not set, it will simply move the program counter to the next location in memory or the next instruction room memory that resides immediately after JC. In this situation, it would actually just go down to this instruction right here, and we don't want that. We want it to say, I know that if it's not set, it's gonna be clear. So I have to actually explicitly put in here, jump if not clear to carry clear. And since I listed out both conditions, I'm safe. One of these will actually take. And immediately, you know, if you're if you've programmed before, you're going to look at this and go, "I bet I could figure this out and make it more optimal." Uh, and the answer is, you can make this more optimal. I'm trying to make this very explicit, and so I'm not caring about putting a lot of instructions in here. All I care about is trying to demonstrate what's going on. Okay, so here that's that's the program. Let's go ahead and save this, buddy, and we'll fire up a little debug session. And then I wanna watch the program counter. Now, in this situation, this, this little code example, the carry will not be set, okay, will not be set. All right, so here I am. Uh, let's go down to 0x8000 for no other reason than to just kind of see what's in memory. And so it's like, here's our entire program, uh, pretty simple. And we'll go, we want to see a couple things. I want to see the status register. And this particular program looks at the carry flag. So I care about that. And I also care about R4. All right. And so, and I got R4 in decimal. So let's go ahead and put a breakpoint on, uh, actually, we care about R5 too. Put that in decimal. So number format, decimal. And I'm going to go ahead. I got my breakpoint at the first instruction. Go ahead and run to it. All right, now let's step and we'll get R4 initialized to zero. So there it is. And now let's go ahead and put something into R5. And now here comes the add instruction, which is gonna add one to R5 and alter the carry flag. Okay, so here I go, add one to it. It went to 255, carry is not set. Carry is equal to zero. 
Now, here's what's important about this, okay? Here's what's important about this. I'm gonna come up here to my program counter. It's at 8,012, which happens to be, which one? So it's at 8,012. What that is, okay, is the instruction of the next, that's the instruction of where JC is sitting, okay? So I am going to now step this and if it is, if C was one, it would actually jump over this instruction and go to here. But I know that it's not, okay? I know that carry is gonna be, e carry is equal to zero. So it's just gonna march to this instruction because it did not take the branch. So I'm gonna go ahead and go boom. And look at what happened. It went right down to 8,014 where this instruction is, is located. And now I go, okay, carry is a zero at this point. So this instruction is going to jump. So this is a true. This instruction did not jump, so it moved to the next location in memory, okay? The next instruction in memory. This one is going to jump, and what we mean by it is gonna jump is it is gonna alter the program counter to something else besides the next instruction in memory. So notice that I actually skipped over these two instructions, and now I am down here, and I am sitting at 8001A, and so I am way down here, and now I'm ready to do this instruction. And if you notice, then this is gonna be, if I go back to R4, which is where we're kind of modifying stuff, I go ahead and I step and it changes R4 to two, which is what carry clear this code does. And now I'm gonna hop back up to main. Where do you think main is? Well, main is right up here. That's probably sitting at 8,000 C. So let's go look at our program counter and I'll go ahead and hop. And lo and behold, I jump back up to 8,000 C. Okay, that was cool. Here's now what we can do. Let's go ahead and change this to actually generate a carry. So let's go ahead and stop this. And I wanna, I wanna generate a carry. Well, I'm using eight bits. So if I did 255 plus one, that would result in 256, which doesn't, you can't represent that with eight, with eight bits. So the answer to this would be the sum is zero with a carry, right? So now I do have a carry in there. Let's see how this program changes. Okay, so here we go, we downloaded that, and now I'm back in my debug session. So I've got the breakpoint still there, so go ahead and run to that. So boom, I run down to here. And now we're gonna, let's see if I can get, okay, R4, so I'm gonna go step, R4 gets set up, now we're gonna do R5 gets 255. All right, so here we go, here's the moment of truth. We are gonna generate a carry by adding one to this. I go boom. It rolled over to zero and the carry flag was set. Now I am going to execute this instruction, jump if carry. Since carry in this situation now is a one, we are going to take the jump. So we will not move to the next location in memory, which is this one. We will instead jump over it and execute this one. So here I go, boom, it jumped. So it skipped this instruction. Came down here, we go ahead and move something into B, or into R4, and then I hop back up to main, okay? And voila. <laughs> All right, we did it. So in summary, okay, these, these are cool. We get to selectively execute code based upon a, the carry flag in this example. But more importantly, we kind of talked about what it means to take a jump and not take a jump. If you don't take the jump, you still execute the jump instruction. It's just that you allow the program counter to be incremented to the next instruction immediately in program memory. And if you do take the jump, you are gonna alter the program counter with an offset in order to move it to some other instruction in memory. All right, that is it, nice work. Again, remember to subscribe to my channel so you can stay up to date on all the latest videos. See ya.